Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this tutorial, I'm going to simulate little buckling of a pipeline using a bucket CAE and I will give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on that. The pipeline length is around 250 meters. Imperfection length, which will be initial imperfection somewhere here in the middle, which is, is has a length of 23 meters. The imperfection height is 0.15 meters operational temperatures are ranging from 60 to 72.2 degrees celsius and pipeline diameter is 0.3239 meters while wall thickness is 0.0127 meters pipe is made up of steel so i will use steel material properties soil is assumed to be rigid what you will learn is you will basically learn how to simulate lateral buckling using implicit tricks method and explicit dynamic method and so if you really want to learn about lateral buckling using implicit tricks or explicit dynamic or to see which one is better then you can continue watching this video as you will learn step by step how to model or simulate lateral buckling of a pipeline see you on the other side okay let's jump into our case and see how we can model the problem which i just explained so i will first start with a pipe so i need to make a pipe so i'm going to go for 3d 3d geomet deformable wire because i'm going to use pipe or beam elements for, for modeling the pipe in this case so i am going to say continue i will create a sketch so the total length of the pipe is 250 so it will be 125 on this side and 125 on this side and out of this 125 11.5 is imperfection so i will start with let's say minus 11.5 so 0 and 0 and go up to minus 125 comma 0 this means it's this and then i will do the same on the other side so it will be 11.5 comma 0 to 1 to 5 comma 0 and now i need to create an imperfection and it's better to do this way so start point end point and this has to be uh, 0 comma 0 point one five meters so everything is in meters so now we have a small imperfection as you can see is there so now i press done then this is my pipe which is almost ready the second thing is to make a soil make rigid soil so i'm going to use 3d discrete and in this case i'm going to go with the shell and then i will press continue and i will make a rectangle which is easier to make I will start with minus 125 comma I think I'm gonna select a width of uh, let's say 10 meters maybe and then I have to go 125 comma minus 10 so this is almost the same length and width again you can choose but i'm choosing this much so this way i have created that i need to create a reference point because it's a rigid body so i'm creating a reference point let's say somewhere here now i go to the next step where i have to define the properties so i'm going to create a material i will define the density which should be since everything is in meters so it's this should be kilograms per meter cube so the density is seven eight five zero and then elastic properties which are approximately 206 exponent 9 which is gigapascals and Poisson's ratio is 0 0.4 in this case so that's what i have done here and also i need to define the thermal expansion so i'll go with expansion and that is exponent 0 0.1234 one one so it should be one exponent 1.1 exponent minus 5 per degree centigrade as given to us so this is done 
And now I'm going, going to go to the first part. I need to create a beam element here. Yep, beam element. And in this case, I need to define the profile as well. So for profile, I'm going to select pipe and then press continue. The radius of the pipe is given to us and that should be zero point diameter is zero. Uh, 0 0.3239 meters so I in order to compute the radius I need to divide by 2 so the diameter is given to us which is 0 0.3239 I divide it by 2 and I get a diameter of radius of around 0 0.16195, 0 0.16195, and then the thickness, wall thickness is given to us as 0.0127 meters. So this way I can define it. Also, you can select a thick or thin formulation. So in this case, the again, if you are interested in pipeline design, then I have a very nice course on that, which I teach at the University of Aberdeen. So you can search for that. And, and I can also provide a link if you ask in the comment below. So in that, I also teach about different theories and formulations. So th for thin wall, a thumb rule is if diameter over thickness ratio is a 20 is greater than 20, then you assume it to be a thin wall formulation, which is the case for this present dimension. So I'm going to go with thin wall formulation. And I think we are pretty much done here. We're not going to change anything else. And then we're going to so our solid section is there with a the beam and now we're going to assign it to the whole thing here and that's we are done with this it's better to check the normals which way the normals are in the radial direction or not so now we go to assembly we bring both the parts together okay that's how it looks like now and we don't need to do any translations we go to the next step and in the first case i would do with explicit dynamic analysis so you go and create firstly an explicit dynamic step press continue keep it on everything before remains default in this case and we go and define the interaction in the next step and or i would say next step would be the first step would be basically the gravity step so we will apply a gravity load so that everything is contact and then the second step we will define the temperature or thermal load so that we can see if this thermal load is going to cause literal buckling in the pipe or not so i will create another step here and i will keep everything default in this case as well and for all the cases i would suggest to ask for temperature outputs as well because we need to monitor the temperatures as well so then we go to the interaction in this case it's pretty easy 3d contact you can use general contact formulation but i'm going to go with surface as well and i can select the first surface which is this one <clears throat> and i will select the brown one which is the top one and for the second surface i have to select the pipe so i will now go and select the pipe So now pipe is selected for the second surface. So now it's given us different options and obviously we need the surface to be the circumference of this pipe. So we're gonna select circumferential here. Here we need to define the interaction properties. So again, the interaction properties are given to us. Normal behavior is hard contact, while for the initial behavior, they have used penalty and the friction coefficient is 0.4. So this way we have defined the interaction properties and the interaction between the two as well. And now we go to the next one, which is the loading. So loading in the first step, we need to define gravity load, which is this one. And we would define the gravity in Z direction. As you see, that is this. So minus 9.81 meters per second, which is the acceleration due to gravity. So if you go and change the direction, then you can see this column gravity will be applied in this direction. Then we go to the next one and let's use first select the reference point of this and we will fix the whole soil with this so it's in caster 
and we are also required to fix both the ends of the pipe based on the fact that there is no motion due to friction in the at the end of these pipes since the pipeline is too long so again i'm going to encast this and this end with the encaster loading so now we have done i think the correct boundary conditions so next thing is firstly to assign the temperature initially and that should be okay so we will define the temperature and then we can select the pipe to define the temperature to be zero kelvin in this case again you, you can use the whatever term conditions your pipeline is exposed to as a starting point as well in this case it was given to be zero for us if you are if you are not see then it could be four degrees or even around that so we have defined that so if you look at this now so it's being propagated but in step one you remember is the gravity we are not changing temperature but step three step two we have to modify it and we have to apply the loading temperature which is the operational temperature around 60 degrees celsius so we have done that and it's now modified so we have now correctly defined everything next step is mesh so firstly we're going to mesh this whole thing and let's apply a global size of one again you can play around with this and see what is a my optimal mesh for your case if i mesh then it's 250 elements and we can check the element type and that element type in this case should be it's an explicit analysis so we're going to go with the pipe element and these are pipe 31 elements which are two noted pipe elements in this case so again the paper mentioned some other element for this which is not true because for explicit analysis this is the only element we have for explicit case so this is done then the, for the second k part which is the soil we again going to do some kind of thing so we can use the same mesh or we can use slightly coarser mesh as well so so again i'm not going to optimize it you can try different bias or whatever to mesh it properly but i think for me it's okay because this is a rigid part so in any case it's not going to have a huge load on that so you can see this is a discrete rigid element okay so now if i go look at the element then you can see it looks something like this and now i'm going to go and i will see if i can run the job so i'll create a job which will be called uh, let's say literal buckling explicit analysis and in this case as i always do i will use double precision and full precision for all the solutions and i always like to do that okay let's submit it and see if it is working or not so to wait in until it finishes and then we can look at the results so you see now simulation is finished and without any problems i'm going to go and look at the results now so you see the pipe looks something like this again you can see i have rendered the pipe with actual profile so you see there is some literal buckling happening in the pipe as you see so and again don't don't fall for this basically these are pipe elements and i'm just renting it to show as a pipe so what you will see here is or what you can do if you want to bring this thing in is you go to view and then you go to i think odb display option and you say render beam profile and i have scaled it five times that's why you see it's going through or going inside the soil if i make it one time then it will be should be fine because it's over the surface right now if you don't want to render it then you can just make it like a line as well but to for a better visibility i think you can go with maybe not five but two or something and you can see like a pipe okay and you definitely see some little buckling here which was supposed to happen because our imperfection was here if you look at the temperatures because we need to reach to a temperature of 60 and i think i gave only one second for that so let's see if it has reached so it has reached to that temperature in this case quite quickly but i would say that to avoid any inertia effects you can give a more uh, higher time increment or step time maybe 20 10 seconds or something to to make it go relax 
okay and then if you look at the displacement then you see the displacements are something like this so again let's make it more uh, accurate by modeling it for a certain amount of time to avoid any inertia effect so let's do it for 10 seconds here right to apply and get it relaxed and for the second one maybe i will run it for 25 seconds okay to avoid any issues now if i go back and check my loads again so you see the modified ones are 60 degrees celsius initially it was zero but this is the only thing which is acting onto it and in the, in the step number one okay sorry this should be in step number one which is the gravity load so i need to move it to the left and then it should be propagated so now everything is correct apologies i made mistake because our first step as you remember was a gravity step and then in the second step we will heat it up to an operational load which is 60 degrees which is this step here now everything is correct and we go back and submit already having a long day apologies for that so let's submit it wait for a bit and then we will look at the results once it's finished as you see the simulation again is finished with without any problem and it so let's go and look at the results now so you see some lateral buckling happening in the pipe as anticipated let's see if we have reached to the temperatures which are 60 degrees that's fine and if you look at the displacement then it's around so you see the displacement is around 1.2 meters which is this one you can see this is the maximum one and on these sides you have a they're going on the other side because these ends are fixed and there's around 0.57 meters in the negative y directions so you can see now that you you have we, have we are able to predict the displacements and the lateral buckling in the pipeline we're using abacus explicit solver if you want to create a nice animation of this then basically you have to go and press this create animate time history and you can slow it down by this and play in loop and you can play in once and then press ok and if you press now so you see how it really works so if i can bring xy plane here then you can see it starts straight remember the imperfection is somewhere here so as the thermal loading will start during step two it will start to literally buckle in this direction and these will start to go in the downward direction and the maximum displacement displacement here is around 1.2 meters while on the negative side if we go look at u2 it is around 0.57 meters so this way you see we can use explicit to predict nicely how the buck lateral buckling area occurs without any problems now let's go to the second case where we want to use implicit solver and in this case for for this kind of behavior we're going to use rick's solver so let's go back to this and i would say that let's copy this same model because we don't need to again make the geometry okay implicit and now i'm going to go and modify this so properties remain the same we're not going to change anything in this remember mass density, elastic properties, and thermal expansion coefficient. Also, we had pipe section. It has profile 1 with material 1 properties. And if you remember, for pipe, we have defined the profile with a radius of this and thickness of this by thin wall formulation. Okay, and radius is the outer radius, not the inner one. So, this is done here and then you assemble the assembly will remain the same and then we come to the step definition and this is where everything will change so i'm going to delete all these steps now i will create first step as static general because in that case we will apply gravity load so i'll keep it on one second and let's give it a time increment of minimum and maximum of 0.1 and as always i'm going to give it a value of 10,000 for maximum number of increments press ok 
so interaction we can't we have interaction still there so we need to delete those because still it's confused we can't use those interactions in in, in this kind of a nice step definition again same thing static general general nonlinear geometric option is on 10,000 for maximum number of increments initial to be 0.1 maximum to be 0.1 and then press ok and the next step would be static rex element so in this case uh, this is a bit tricky we're going to use all as default maybe we can give a value of 10,000 or something but we, in, in this case it never stops right it just keeps on going computing all the unstable behavior so we can give the limit or stopping criteria so in this case i'm going to give a propo load proportional factor let's say of one that is the applied load reaches to one or the maximum displacement in degree of freedom two if you remember the here we had the maximum degree of freedom in degree of freedom two sorry reaches to two degree two meters maybe or maybe we had one point two meters there 1.2 meters was predicted for through explicit so we can give 1.5 as well but let's give it a 2 so what will happen as soon as your load will reach to that 60 degrees or the maximum displace, displacement in the region which we're going to select now in degree of freedom 2 equals to 2 meters the analysis will stop otherwise it will keep on going until the total number of or maximum number of increments are reached okay so now we need to define the node set here which has the maximum deflection and we will select that one node there so we go to manager and we say create node i think it should be somewhere here if it can select okay so Maybe let me remove Okay, we can go with this one It was difficult to get the node So this is set 5 I'll bring everything back now and I will select set 5 here press ok so now we have a stopping criteria for that as well and also here we need to check if we are asking for temperatures because we need to monitor the temperatures so we have asked for it now next is we go to interactions we already have interaction property so we're going to use the same and now we're going to create surface to surface contact so again we go back here select the main surface which is this and we'll select the brown as usual then surface again in this case we're going to select these pipe elements in circumferential direction an interaction property if you remember hard contact and penalty method for friction equals to 0.4 as coefficient so we are now done with that and this should be again move left I have done the same with the boundary conditions. If something happens and you have defined it to another step, you can always move right or left. That's what I have done here. And you can do the same with all the other loading and boundary conditions as well. So this is done. Now we go to the loads. First thing is for step one, we need to define gravity load. So we select step one and then it should be minus 9.81. And we define it for step one and it's propagated. Okay, then we have to define the boundary condition. So this is there. We don't need to change it. These are also there. We don't need to change that. And also we might have this. So this is a zero. And for step two, it has to be modified to 60. And that's pretty much it. I think we have defined everything correctly. And we already have the mesh and everything. So we don't need to do much on that as well so we can quickly go and create another job we call it lateral buckling 
Let me call it M plus Rx basically. X more algorithm. Again, I go with full precision. And then submit. If everything is correct, then it should run without any problems. Unfortunately, my job Abacus crashed and I my mistake I haven't saved the file so I had to recreate all the file again and I'm rerunning the both the analysis now so you can see this one is Rex analysis and this one is the explicit analysis and everything else is very much the same what I showed you in the video until now nothing has changed and now you can see this one is the Rex one which is running and it should stop <clears throat> when it crosses that temperature which we have specified or the displacement in degree of freedom to reaches to the critical value which is two meters which we have specified while in this case obviously we are applying at the boundary condition or initial condition at 60 degrees celsius so it's gonna heat it heat the pipe up to that point and due to which we will see the buckling in the pipeline which is literal buckling so Let's wait for it and once it's finished then I will show you the results. So as you see as you can see implicit Rex analysis has been finished and it is stopped either when the temperature was crossing but has had crossed the 60 degree mark or the displacement had reached 1.2 sorry 2.0 meters as I explained when I was defining the steps while explicit finished after 25 seconds as we have then described in the total time period of the explicit dynamic step so now let's it's the it's now the time to reveal how the results look like so i would first go with the implicit one and maybe i will create a viewport and then i will arrange them vertically maybe then i will bring here that I will open here. This is the Rix one, so this should be explicit. So I'm going to open the explicit one here. So explicit one is this one. We just finished, so I'm going to open this one. And so you see both show very similar trend as anticipated. And if I plot the temperature in both the cases, so Okay, so what I have done and in this case also, in both the cases, I have defined the temperature to be 72.2 degrees Celsius because for implicit analysis, when you give a threshold value of 60, so the next, as soon as it crosses that, so it, it goes to the next one, which is earlier than this, it will stop after that. So this was the next step for it. So that's why it stopped somewhere here. So again, you can go back to the step definition. And you can change those time increment values which I showed you before to bring it to 60. So it was easier for me to draw to play with, with that. I just applied a temperature boundary condition here, initial condition here as 72.2 degrees so that I can, we can have a one to one comparison. So now, if I plot U2, which is 1.4, and if I plot U2 here, so you see it's around 1.57. So implicit tricks method is predicting slightly higher value for this temperature, uh, which is 72.2, while explicit analysis is giving you around 0.411 meters, which again, they are very close to each other. They're not really far away. I would suggest, I think this would be, if I take a difference, percentage error, then it will be 1.557 minus 1.411. And then if I divide it by 1.577, then it's around 9% error. So so it's still 10 within 10%. And you can modify different things like mesh and mesh sensitivity analysis, etc., to get closer results for both the cases. So this way you can really find out the displacements, you can see the temperatures, you can also see what are the stresses around here for both the cases, and they are again very close to each other and not very far off temperatures both should have 72.2 because that was the prescribed one 
or my from my side and you can see they are the same so i hope this way you are able to predict the lateral buckling in a pipeline and see how much deflection you will get in your pipeline after a little buckling if the loading temperature is being changed so now you can play around with the temperatures and with the risk analysis you can basically see at each temperature there so for example in this case even in that case as well you just move around you see if the loading is around let's say 40 degrees or around 48 degrees then how much displacement will be there so for this time increment you can go and check the displacements similarly for this one as well if you go back to 48 it doesn't have actual 48 but 46 point something so if you check the temp displacements here then you will see uh, it should be magnitude for this case as well so they are pretty close as well so this way you can predict the values and obviously that there, there was i mean the subscriber also asked that they were he was not getting actual results uh, because the values are lower or 60 degrees and i think the reason behind that is they might have used reported these results without changing or checking where the analysis stopped so they couldn't manage to go up to 60 degrees and they might have gone up to 70 degrees or something and they reported their results and that's why their values are higher than the values reported by by the subscriber but again you can optimize the simulation as i said you can define better mesh and you can improve the results so i hope this made sense and you learned something out of it so thank you very much and i will see you with the next video if you have any questions or comments about this video or anything else then please get in touch or comment below and don't forget to like the videos as well thank you very much and bye for now